Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You know, on this show, a lot of times we talk about the differences between men and women. Yeah, I know a few of them. Marriage. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if science has come up with an equation that pits two people together to uncover and develop a successful relationship. Is there some sort of formula? Hmm. Yes, and we're gonna give it to you next on Men Are So Smart. Well, hello and welcome to our show. This is Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we're glad you're here today. Thank you for watching. Um, if you're new to our show, thanks. If you are one of our fan treasure viewers, thanks for watching one of our other episodes. I'd like to tell you that we have over 400 episodes of our show in our library. That's crazy. And you can go back and watch them at any time. In fact, you could even go all the way back to show number one, if you wished. And you'll see the evolution of our show <laughs> over the last two years. Slightly different. Yeah. We know of which we talk. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, does science have a formula for an effective, successful relationship? Well, science says science attractive women and rich men are the best recipe for a happy marriage hmm. is it really that simple well as you may know according to charles darwin's theory of sexual selection all of us have a mate value a numerical rating that determines how desirable we are to other people while it's the sum of a variety of traits one mate's value is largely determined by physical appearance for women and resources for men. Ooh. Choosing the person we want to spend our lives with in such a clinical way is unromantic, to say the least. But according to a new study published in Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin, having a very conventionally attractive wife or a rich husband could lead to a happier marriage. And this tells me right off the bat that the root of all evil in relationships is money. Right. Yeah. Or is it the savior? Oh, I don't know. Uh, for the study, Florida State University researchers studied 113 heterosexual newlywed couples in North Texas uh -huh. and 120 newlywed couples in North Florida. Ooh, Florida. I Reci think that's going to skew results right Recipe there. for disaster. Uh, over a period of three years, okay. they found that men who had attractive versus unattractive wives were more satisfied at the start of their marriages, and women who had high versus low status husbands experienced less steep declines in satisfaction over time. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Let's continue. Let's find out more. So before you bring out the pitchforks, let's look at the finer print. The researchers noted that the results only to apply only to maximizers people who make decisions based on what they feel will yield the best possible outcome later on. But there are also plenty of satisficers whose decisions are determined by more modest criteria. In the study, satisficers levels of satisfaction were not impacted by how physically attractive their wife was or how much money their husbands made in any significant way. Interesting. Yep. You know, go ahead. I was just going to go to the next part. Uh, maximizing people are constantly trying to obtain the very best outcomes in life. Okay. Uh, Juliana French, a psychology professor at FSU, Florida State University, and lead author of the study, said in a press release, for example, which is the best ice cream flavor? Which is the best song on the radio right now? In the context of romantic relationships, maximizers are those who seek the best possible partner and who, over the course of their relationships, continue to compare their partners to other potential partners. Simply put, maximizers go into a mall to buy socks and need to check every single store before deciding which pair is the best option huh. instead of just picking up whatever's on sale or a longtime favorite brand. If that's your approach to making life choices, then it would make sense that choosing a partner with a high mate value 
would lead to greater marital satisfaction, at least in the beginning. And I keep saying that, Ronnie. Yeah. But you should find solace in the fact that not everybody is like that. Well, Thank you know, I, I think that this may be a fairly blanket study, but they probably didn't use any celebrities. Because, you know, celebrity marriages, even though they seem perfect, um, they tend to, most of them don't last. No. Yeah, they uh, go through that honeymoon period. Tom Hanks and his wife are probably a notable exception. They've mm -hmm. been married decades. Um, and, uh, oh my God, Harrison Ford and I can't think of her Calista name. Callista Flockhart. Flockhart. Yeah. Notable exceptions. But by and large, uh, you have seemingly really great couples. Um, I can't think of their names. Uh, she's the, the blonde girl on Mom. Anna Ferris. Anna Ferris. And her husband, is it was it Christine? Or I can't think of his name either right now. Anyway, they're like both the all-American couple. And now they're filing for a divorce. Yeah. And amicably. Yes. Yeah. Which is great. Yep. Uh, so this goes on to say what it's worth. Psychologists say that maximizers tend to experience lower levels of happiness and self-esteem than satisficers overall. They also tend to have more feelings of regret over their decision when a so-called better option comes along. Um, you know, and I can't help but think the greatest example of a guy who had money was on top of the world and married way, way out of his class, Rick Ocasek from the Cars. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Charlie Sheen. Uh, Charlie Sheen. <laughs> he's I, not on a... He, I mean, Rick Ocasek is the... That's the pinnacle. He married a supermodel, Paulina Porzakova. Supermodel. Right. Now, it didn't last. It, they, they made quite a few years. I don't and know. And made it quite a few kids, I think. Yes. But for whatever reason... And they they split up, but holy cow! You want to talk about one of the funniest looking guys in the world marrying one of the most beautiful women in the world? Um, but you know what the common denominator is there? Money. Oh yeah. Now, not that she didn't have enough of her own. She had. She probably but, in the long run, she probably made more than he did. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. So. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> but well, you know, it's all relative when I think about it because, I mean. Um, Think about think about this for a second. Let's do a demonstration here. On a scale of one to ten in terms of attractiveness, what do you rate yourself, Ron? Oh, I'm pretty middle of the road. I would say five or six. Okay. What do other people rate you? Uh, I would say nine or ten. And what does your wife rate you? A, a ten plus. It's all relative. Yeah. You know, so you may think you're an eight, but you're actually a four. <laughs> Yeah. Are you going to get a 10? <laughs> Not without money. Yeah. There you go. I've just summed up this whole episode right there. Yeah. So what science is saying now is very simply that attractive women and rich men make for a recipe for a happy marriage. Yeah. But what if you're neither? <laughs> you're just determined to have bad marriages all through your life. you got a long road to hoe. You know, one of our viewers... He sent me an email the other night and said he was he had just gotten rid of his sixth wife. Are you kidding me? Yes. How much money do you have? Yeah, holy cow. And I, I replied, you know why divorce is so expensive. Why, Ronnie? Because it's worth it. Okay, there you have it. And he agreed. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed today's show. <laughs> We're doing a lot of stuff on marriage lately. I wonder why that is subconsciously, huh? It might be something to that. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel. We would greatly appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, coming up, I want to let you know our shows uh, come out on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. More than not, our Friday episode is a fan episode and it will be this week as well so make sure you're tuned in for that uh, and if you're a fan searcher and you're just stumbling on to some of the other stuff we do in addition to the treasure thank you we appreciate it and as i said before we have a bevy of episodes in the can that you can watch going back 
400 episodes. Yep. Hope you will. Thanks so much. I'm Luke Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. See you next time on Men Are So Smart.